Podcast uh, today at the Witchwood Festival. My name is Alan Anderson, and I've been joined today by um, a man who kind of made my youth when I was growing up. If it wasn't Red Dwarf, then it was Robot Wars, then it was Takashi's Castle. Uh, nowadays, he is the biggest reason that people buy digital radios in the UK, and every comic driving to a gig on a Saturday night tunes into this boy when we're on our way. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a man with a tongue of funk. It's Craig Charles. How are you doing? Hi, yeah, good man, how are you? I'm absolutely fantastic. Um, when you said I made your youth, I thought, I don't remember on, being on Blue Peter. <laughs> <laughs> what did I make it out of? <laughs> um, so, to, you, you're, you're famous nowadays to most people for playing Lloyd and Coronation Street, but really, where your passion is, is the music. And we've just had an excellent couple of hours in the big talk for you at Witchwood. How was it for you? Oh, we tore the place apart. We just, we just like, uh, we are all kind. We love doing that kind of stuff, man. It's just like, uh, you know, I get to play funk and soul music. I get to watch people dance and enjoy themselves. I get to dance around myself. It's like getting invited to a really cool party and getting to choose the music. Mm -hmm. I just, I love doing it. And, um, and it's a lot less stressful than, than, than doing stand-up, you know. I, did, I toured the world doing stand-up for years and years, and it was just so stressful. And touring the world DJing is a lot less going on, you know what I mean? You can actually enjoy it a bit more. Well, we, we've kind of flipped the other way around because I started off DJing in the clubs back in the 1990s yeah. and then did the stand-up once and went, wow, this is amazing. Dude, getting one big laugh yeah. is the equivalent of dropping one amazing tune in front yeah. of a thousand people. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, they're, they're two very interesting, very very similar, but, but very different things. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a quite weird, the correlation between stand-up and, and DJing now, because I, I, mean, I know an awful lot of comedians who are quite decent DJs as well. John Thompson's a good friend of mine and he's a good DJ, you know. And um, and we were talking the other night about like what you prefer stand up or DJing and he didn't he didn't want to choose. But I suppose I'll go back to stand up again one day. But like um, it's nice to take some time out and play a bit of music. Good, good. Well what we've got today is mm. you've got your trunk of funk. I've got my box of booze. Uh, we've got we've got a whole load of um, Whiskey's here, and what mm. we're going to do with you mm. is uh, it was here last year or the year before. Uh, you got uh, my favourite artist of all time, James Taylor, mm -hmm. the Hammond, Hammond organ man yeah, from yeah. James Taylor Quartet. You got him together with a load of amazing musicians uh, for, for fantasy funk bands, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, what you did was you blended some of the best musicians mm. in the UK and around the world yeah. to create an amazing sound yeah. on the radio um, for, for that afternoon. And what we've got here is we've got some absolutely fantastic whiskies, right? Mm -hmm. Now, you said to me earlier on, what kind of whiskey do you like? I'm an Irish whiskey man, I'm a Jameson's man, really. Right. I like a bit of Bush Mills, a bit of Black Bush, but like, I'm mainly a Jameson's man. Right, so you like it a little bit sweet, a little bit mellow, right? Yeah, I don't like it too peaty, you know what I mean? Okay, well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take, um, we're gonna blend some whiskies together, but not in a bottle. We're going to blend them in your mouth a little bit like you did with those musicians and uh, we're going to see if we can create a little a little bit of funk I'm not sure, in your mouth. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to do this because my wife tells me that whiskey turns me into an arsehole and, uh, and she's actually banned me from whiskey so don't be watching this Jackie. Right? <laughs> right. right, so what we're going to try and do, we're going to start off um, every good funk and soul record, it needs a groove. Right? Mm -hmm. So we're going to start off with something that's going to give us a groove. Something which, uh, if I can just find the right one in here. Right, we're going to start off with this one. It's uh, it's 12 year old Glen Fitter, right? Most of you will have drunk it, will have enjoyed it, right? So this is going to this is going to be like our, our percussion in the background. I don't mind Glen Fitter, I like Glen Livet more. But the reason I like Glen Livet is because it tastes like James. Alright. <laughs> 
Now, on a sunny Sunday afternoon, are you complaining about having that Glenfiddich in your mouth? I am not complaining at all, sir. Right. In fact, the interview's over. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Hold my calls, I can't speak to anybody. <laughs> Right, so that Glen, that Glen Firth that you've just had, um, we're going to make that. It's a 12 year old. It's a 12 year old. Uh, it's coming in at 40%, like mostly Glen Firths. Yeah. If that were uh, a percussionist, a jazz, a funk, a soul percussionist, which jazz, funk, a soul percussionist would it be and why? That's Bernard Perry, that mate, because it's, uh, it's right on the money. It holds me all the way down. After we've got the percussion, what we need is um, we need uh, we need to have we need to have the horns, right? We need to have the horn section. What we're doing is we're moving just downstream a wee bit along the corner and then up the river spare a wee bit. We're going to Aberlour again, a ten-year-old. And what a lot of people say is that the new make spirit you get before they put it in a barrel is the best new make in the whiskey industry, right? Yeah. So have a bit of Aberlour. It's going to be a similar kind of question. If it were someone from the horn section, who would it be and why? Brash there. Mm, that's a bit brash that. It's, um, it's kind of like a that's, a. that's a saxophone, mate. That's a saxophone, mate. And who is it playing that saxophone? It's got to be Maceo Parker. Right? That's, that's Maceo, mate. That's Maceo, that is. Good on you, Maceo. Maceo Parker is the Aberlour 10. Right, so we'll get the drums, we'll get the horns. Uh, we're going to have uh, we're going to have a little bit of vocals coming up here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to give you this. This is Wild Turkey. Wild, wild Turkey. It's Wild Turkey 101. It's 50.5 percent. Um, it's a uh, it's a straight Kentucky bourbon. That's a bourbon. I'm not a big bourbon fan, to be fair. All right. Yeah, I mean, I don't like Jack Daniels or. Quite a lot stronger than JD though. JD's coming in. I think these days it's about 36, 37 percent. Oh, that's got a kick on it. That's got a kick. That's definitely got a kick on it. Uh, if that was a singer, you're saying? Yeah. Ooh, it's got a bit of gravel in that as well, hasn't it? You know, it's a bit of Joe Cocker. That is a bit of Joe Cocker. A bit kind of a, a bit early James Brown, Flame and Flames James Brown. In fact, I think you could probably set fire to my breath now with it. <laughs> it's uh, that's strong. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a cross between James Brown and Joe Cocker. Right, James Brown and Joe Cocker. Now you said it's a bit strong. Mm. It's not the strongest one we've got because for me the strongest bit about Funk and Soul mm. is the bass line. Bass right, oh. you need the bass line. So what we've got now, if I can just find it in here somewhere, uh, we're going to take you to the Glen Talkers Distillery. Uh, if I can just find, where the hell is it? Right, it must be this one. Right, Glen Talkers, this is a special bottling by the Good Spirits Company in Glasgow. It's a seven year old, it's coming in at 58.3%. It's a single cask. Yeah. It's been aged in old sherry barrels, oh, right? Yeah. So, if it was a bassist or a, or a baseline, which one would it be and why? You hardly touched Whoa. that one. Oh! I touched it enough. <laughs> Fly on! I could fly home on this. I'm gonna sack my driver off and fly. I think. <laughs> um, whoa! See, I, I'm not enjoying that as much as uh, the others really. Um, for the reason, it should be fun drinking whiskey. It shouldn't be like an ordeal. You know what I mean? It's a bit like people who, it's a bit like people who go uh, to Indian restaurants go. Give me the hottest curry you've got, and you see them, and they have a few bites, and they turn white, and then and then and they start dripping, and like they've turned it into an ordeal, a challenge. You know what I mean? Right. Well, and tell I you what, find that quite challenging. You know. Speaking of challenges, what we're going to do then is uh, we're going to add a tiny wee bit of water to it. Um, we've got this glass here, right? We're going to we're going to wet it down a wee bit for you, right? Um, this uh, this is George because because it is a stunning whiskey, but with a little bit of water to it, mm, yeah. right? Um, I thought Scotsman didn't like adding water to the whiskey. No, adding water to the whiskey is absolutely fine. What we don't like you adding to your whiskey is ice, mm. as in crushed ice, right? Okay. Uh, the camera work on this is absolutely right. So put a wee bit in there. A little bit in there. Right. Yeah. Okay, we'll add a tiny wee touch of water. Right, try it now. 
didn't give me much water, did you? I didn't give you a lot of water, you know no. I mean? Do you need some more? Uh, was there a drought or something? <laughs> no, no, do you want, do you want some is more? There a, is there a hose pipe band that I wasn't aware of? <laughs> oh, it's got a nice taste to it, isn't it? It's, it's right, it's changed, hasn't it? Mmm, it has changed, actually. It's got a nice taste to it. That's a Bootsy, that is, mate. A Bootsy? That's Bootsy Collins, mate. Bootsy on the base. Definitely a bit of Bootsy Collins there. And that's a that's quite a high compliment. Good. Excellent, right. Well, yeah. finally, what we've got for you, the last one of today. Um, this is called Cask 23. And what the guys at the Good Spirits Company have done is they've got a, a small cask in the shop. Mm -hmm. And uh, every couple of months, they add about five gallons of um, cask strength whiskey from one of the distilleries yeah. and they blend it all together. And in the shop, the blend actually changes every single day as it reacts yeah. with the cask. So we've taken all these elements mm. together. We've got we've got the groove, we've got the bass line, we've got the horns, we've got the vocals. Mm. And what we want you to do is have a taste of this yeah. and tell us if it were a piece of music. Oh, well, which cask. piece of music would it be it and why? It's mysterious, Cask 23, doesn't it? It sounds like otherworldly, like Area 51 or something <laughs> like that, you know? Cask 23. You haven't got percentage on this. We don't because the percentage changes every single day because it's a Whoa. living cask. Lively. That's nice, that actually. That's very nice, that. How much would the bottle of that be? Um, that size bottle, uh, the 20 CLs, that'll be about, I think it's 15 pounds. For one that size, yeah. um, but every every couple of weeks, the flavour you get from it changes. So and what the guys nail it down, like hasn't got a recipe right there. No, but what you, they, they they put the list up the menu yeah. of what has previously been in it, but you'll never know the proportions because the barrel gets drained, topped up. So they, they, they drain it to about half when it's about half filled. Mm -hmm. They'll add the next bit in. Um, and so the last fill of it was of that Glen Talkers, which you yeah. just tasted. Yeah. Before that, I think I've had some Buna Haven, I've had some Ardbeg and a whole load of others. Well, it's got a nice bass line to this as well, like, uh, not a bootsy bass line, but a nice bass line. Um, if it was a song, this, I mean, Papa was a rolling stone. Papa was a rolling stone? Yeah. Why? Because it's got a lovely bit of a bass to it, and uh, it just makes me feel groovy. Excellent, excellent. Right, uh, well, Craig, thank you very, very much. Um, I hope you've had a lovely end to your set. Brilliant, mate. Uh, I hope you, the audience, are actually going to be able to hear this because of what's been going on in the background. Um, so, what are you playing next over the summer? Uh, we're playing everywhere. We're doing a big gig at Glastonbury. Uh, I've got the Fantasy Fun Band playing at the Proms in the Park for the BBC. In front of 40,000 people, we're doing that. Uh, I'm playing uh, Shangri-La at Glastonbury. I'm also there doing... Um, uh, the BBC introducing stuff at Glastonbury, so I'm introducing uh, bands like Sheik and uh, Public Enemy and Bobby Womack on, on the West Hall stage in Glastonbury. We're playing the Eden Festival uh, in, in Dumfries. We're playing. Uh, I'm curating them uh, mostly funk, soul, and jazz festival in Birmingham. We've got our own festival, the Great Charles Festival, which is going to happen in August in Bristol. So um, we've got so many. We're working every weekend. It's, it's good fun, like. Right, uh, Craig, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, it's good to see we've got our sunglasses on. Hey, got yeah. my sunglasses on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this has been the Whiskey Comedian Podcast. I'm Alan Anderson. You can find out more at whiskeycomedian.com. Thanks to the guys at Good Spirits Company in Glasgow for providing the whiskies. Thanks to everyone here at Witchwood. And most importantly, thanks to Craig. Thank you and bye bye. <laughs> I'm gonna go